Are we live? I think we might be live. Hi, y'all. It's Kate with Missouri Star Live, and happy Tuesday from very snowy, chilly Hamilton today. I am here with my lovely assistant, y'all might remember, Teresa Kinsler, who heads up our shops, and uh, she has got all sorts of fun things to talk about that are going on in town today. We've got some reviews of some of the quilt uh, tutorials you might have missed from last week. We're going to show off a Quilting Is video. We're going to give away this lovely vintage book with Amy Barrickman, uh, who's also uh, my interview for today to talk about Quilting as History, part of our National Quilting Month uh, celebration all month long here at Missouri Star. That was a lot. Um, Teresa, is there anybody um, logging on saying hi yet that we should say hello to? Yes, we have Jerry. Oh, from the, oh my, I, I can't say that word, Horsham? Horsham? Seems legit, uh, I believe yeah, you. Yeah, okay, all right. And then Rosemary Blair Good, she says good morning from Nevada. Good morning. So they're, they're, they're getting with us here, Kate. Well, we, on top of giving away this Vintage Notions book from Amy Barrickman, we will also be giving away, and it'll be one lucky winner who wins them both, this Fold and Go Folio um, pattern that she's going to show off later, which is a fantastic way to upcycle used and found blocks. Like if you um, find something beautiful at an antique mall or inherit something, this is a way to preserve it and make it useful. Uh, so we'll be giving that away. Dalton is on YouTube and Hannah is on Facebook. So please say hello to them and they will be dropping the links to um, where you can sign up for that giveaway. It is US only, unfortunately. International contest law is just too much for me. Um, but we will be drawing the winner at the end of the show and Amy will be announcing who won live. So make sure that you stick around all the way to the end so you can see if you won or not. Um, let's see, what do we have going on in town uh, this week, Teresa? Because I know we've had uh, some really fun things planned. Yes, we do. We're quite busy in town. Today at 1 o'clock, Jenny will be in the main store, and she will do her book signing. So if you would like to have a copy of uh, Jenny's book, we would love to have you stop in and say hi to Jenny, and she'll be more than happy to sign the book for you. And that's not a lot of notice, as that is in two hours, but if you can get here for it. And exactly. also, if you, um, if those are things that you want to stay aware of. We do so many things in town in Hamilton. Make sure you're following our Quilt Town USA page on Facebook, which is where we always post um, in-town events. You know, we do Hollywood and Hamilton on the weekends when you can come in and see a movie in the theater. Trunk shows with Edie all month long on Thursdays. Anything um, fun and quilty happening in Hamilton, we'll post about there. So make sure you're following. And just so you know, the, on Thursday, Edie did cancel because she oh, was worried right. about the weather. So that's don't come right. this Thursday. Don't come this Thursday for the trunk show. It won't be happening. Right. But we do have a scrap sale going on in Pennies. So if you're in town, come into Pennies, and we have little bags for you. They're 11 by 15 bags. You fill the bag as many times as you want. They're uh, $10.95 each, but we're getting a lot of bags filled. And my understanding is there's like their secret techniques that all of our sh um, shoppers and people who've done this a few times have as far as how to just make the physics of a bag of fabric work for the maximum amount of scraps. Right. For is it like a is it like a roll and it's the rolling technique is that for it? Boy That's Scouts. how I pack suitcases too. So <laughs> if you've sense. ever sent a boy scout to uh, Philmont for two weeks with a little bit of stuff, you roll, roll, roll. It's quite the quite the adventure. <laughs> yeah, and then it's not as wrinkled either, so it works out. Right. Less ironing when you get it out. We're all gonna iron. We're quilters. <laughs> Who are we kidding? So, not to um, so we've got the scrap sale, mm -hmm. and we've got uh, Jenny's book signing today, and then tomorrow, if you're able to be in town, and you can also watch it live on Facebook and YouTube at 11 a.m., Jenny's going to be doing a live tutorial of this folio pattern right here in the main shop. So that means that you can come to the main shop and watch it live and ask questions. And if you're not able to join us there, you can certainly join us on Facebook and YouTube. The only other thing that I would say about Main Shop is we have a couple of new products. The shirt that Kate's wearing right now. Oh, oh this whole thing? Yes. This one? <laughs> That's the one. It's our Quilting Is One for March and um, talks about giving, story, art, community, all the things that we as quilters uh, experience when we uh, engage in this hobby and then this community. So I actually really like it. And I think our product team did a stellar job with it. It comes in three colors, so you have that. And then we also have our new T-shirt. Um, it's, it's block across the front, and that has to do with block magazines. So mm -hmm. the position with the block magazines. Yeah, the t-shirt game is strong around here these days. I'm, I'm pretty sure at some point I'm going to have an, to just make my own Missouri Star Quilt t-shirt, t-shirt quilt rather, which I'm not quite there yet. I haven't been with a company long enough to have a full stack, 
but I'm gonna, <laughs> and uh, be massive. So y'all might have noticed, um, oh, sorry, Teresa, are there questions or anybody else we should say hi to? Not yet, not yet. Um, Linda from San Jose, California, we're happy to have hi, her with Linda. us today. Well, this lovely quilt behind me is a, another of Jenny's tutorials. If you didn't get a chance to see it this um, past Friday, we've got a little clip for you that will show. But she made this one up. Um, I don't remember the name of the fabric, but it has all these little quilty notions in it. So you've got um, scissors and button and berries, which are super cute. And, uh, and then it makes these lovely little spools. So uh, we've got a clip for you. If you want to go watch it on YouTube. Go for it, Randy. Hey, everybody. It's Jenny from the Book Company. And I have always been a fan of Deborah Fisher and her curiosity at Fish Museum and Circus. So join me today as we debut her first line and we make it into an awesome quilt. So I do the large spool. This was a quilt we made for a off or during a birthday bash last year and I decided I needed a pattern. Lots of options for this quilt and this is a super easy quilt to make. It's stunning as you can see from the quilt behind me. First thing we're going to do is one of these squares just like this squares and we are going to cut it directly in half just like this and you are going to do a whole um, packet of 10 squares and this is your spool you're done now we're ready to add the tops and bottoms of our spool and so come over here to our little strip pile right here and this makes our top and bottom and so we're just going to put one of these on the top and one on the bottom now if your quarter inch seams are perfect these will line up perfectly. White purse. If one is a little bit bigger, you're going to put that bigger piece on the bottom. Put it on the bottom is because the feet dogs take in a little bit more fabric. So if it's just a little bigger, just kind of ease that in as we sew along and it will just fit perfectly. Our little spool right here. Wasn't that quick to see? My big border, which is this darling little uh, fabric that's based on the little girl that sews with me. So we hope you enjoyed this tutorial on the Big Spools Quilt from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. Really easy, like every time. And, uh, and it, usually, it usually is. She's, um, she's a pro that one. So if you have a chance to make, this thing is massive, by the way. It's one of the bigger, bigger ones I've stolen from the main shop. So if you come to... <laughs> Hamilton while we're shooting Missouri Star Live, the previous um, tutorial quilt is always hanging in it until about 10.30 on Tuesday mornings when I run down and yank it off the wall and then come and use it so you can see it up here. Um, it's not an uh, elegant process. I'm sort of at it. I wrestle, but it makes it. So, Oh, Teresa has a question. Um, they're asking if the t-shirts run true to size. On the one Kate is wearing, that one does, but the block ones, they run just a little bit smaller. was the next size up if I were purchasing one. You know all the things. <laughs> you really do. <laughs> so that was Jenny, and y'all might be missing because she's just seven days now. You get her a day earlier. And we have a clip from At Home with Misty where she has this really cute wall hanging for your sewing space or Let's roll that one, huh, Randy? It is National Quilting Month, and coming up next on At Home, we're going to make this simple pre-cut, pre-fuse applique sign for your sewing room that you can make entirely your own. Be sure to check it out. I want you guys to use your imagination, add borders, make this your own. I can't wait to see what you do with it. And I always, when I'm working on applique projects like this, both directions to give me some I'm going to do that first when you're working with fused applique you want to make sure that you're not pushing your iron and running the risk of flipping up one of those edges and catching that adhesive on iron so we're down and our way across the design first fuse and then once you have it you can go over it again to make sure it's really good and stuck with a nice hot iron that looks great. I do want to remind you of these little sections in the banner. Because most of this is going to be contained, fly away, 
I did not go around every single one of these letters within the banner portion. And, and I just did straight stitches on any of these areas that could lift. So the little pieces that come in on the E, we're just going to do a straight stitch. And so I'm really looking forward to seeing what you do to make this your own. I ha hope you have a wonderful National Quilting Month and that it's full of all kinds of quilting. Goodness. And until next week, have a great time. See you later. So if you haven't gotten a chance to um, watch Misty's tutorial, that one's on Facebook and YouTube as well. It went up yesterday. We are getting reports that um, the buffering and there's maybe some connection issues going on on YouTube and Facebook. That can happen in Hamilton, honestly, with the internet here, especially if there's any kind of inclement weather, which we're currently dealing with. So we apologize. Um, we are aware of it. There's not a ton we can do right now. Um, I think our only recommendation would be to um, make sure you catch it later after all of this is officially posted. Um, but we sure do want to, especially with Amy coming on and her amazing collection of vintage fabrics and quilts and uh, she has so much information to share with us. So if you can hang with us through this buffering and connectivity issue, I think it'll be worth your while. We do want to let you know that um, our machine quilting shop, and uh, you may remember a couple weeks ago we were there doing a tour. We have three new patterns available if you send your quilts in to us. And you can see that website there if you wanna go check it out. But um, I really like that time warp, Teresa. I think that's so cool looking. And what's really fun about it too is that you can, um, you can adjust the sizes of the pattern. So if you like a looser quilt um, pattern on top as opposed to something that's tighter and small, you know, a, a larger, looser pattern will show off your piecing more, um, whereas the smaller one will uh, be more about the quilting itself. So take a look at those. Um, I know we're always trying to get new things in there to keep it interesting and varied for you. And our uh, machine quilting team does a really nice job with those. So. If they bring their quilt to town, we're happy to help them check it in too and, and take care of them and we send it to the warehouse and they can pick it up either in town or we can mail it back to them, whatever works best for them. So many options. What's really fun too is so if you bring it in, you can drop it off upstairs in backings and bindings, which is above um, the machine shed. And, uh, and just there's just a person to really walk you through the process and um, pick out your pattern and bindings and all of the things. And it's a little more boutique, if you will. And uh, that's pretty fun, I think. They, they know their stuff. So speaking, here's a, here's a really nice, great segue. Are you ready for this one? Okay. Speaking of people who know their stuff, here is Natalie. Uh, we all adore Natalie. We get so many questions. Where's Natalie? Well, I've got her right here for you. Um, she is going to show off this um, fusible powder, which I have never used. I'm always, I always do the spray. So if y'all have any strong opinions about that one way or the other, I'd love to hear about them in the um, comments as to why you would prefer one over the other. And we'll read some of those after this clip is done of Natalie showing off this fusible powder. Hi everybody, I'm Natalie from Missouri Star Quilt Company. Mm -hmm. right. and today I'm gonna tell you about Quilter Select Free Fuse. It's a great product. It comes in this little canister, has a lid. When you take this lid off, you'll find the shaker top and that is the delivery system for the powder. Um, inside is the adhesive powder. And so what you're gonna do is cut this bag open and pour the powder into the container. So we'll cut that off. I'm just gonna cut it at an angle there so I can pour it in nice and neat. Just like that. Make sure that uh, you don't put it near your food because it is not consumable. Don't eat it. <laughs> All right, so that is that. This little bottle should do um, a decent size quilt, probably about a little, like a lap size quilt or a twin maybe. You don't need very much. Um, oh, I'm gonna keep the lid off because I'm gonna show you how to use it. So you don't need very much and you can get refills for this bottle once you've got the original bottle. So the first thing that you would do when making a little quilt sandwich, um, you're gonna put the, put the free fuse on the backing first. So batting to backing and you only need a little bit. You can, you can kind of see it's just a, like a very fine powder 
um, but a little goes a long way. So I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna place my backing on top of my batting. And you're gonna press, you can use a pressing cloth if you're worried about the free fuse coming through the fabrics, but um, I haven't had any issue with it. You could also use a Teflon cloth. Uh, that's completely up to you. It will protect your iron if you use a pressing sheet or a Teflon mat. Um, so you're just gonna hold it for three or four seconds in each position, go all the way over the whole thing. Now, if you are doing a larger quilt, you're gonna do it in sections and um, roll down and, and add more powder as you go. But this one is quite small, so I'm gonna flip it over and look at where I wanna put my quilt, my little quilt top. So then I'm gonna put some free fuse on here, just a little bit. Remember, you don't need very much. And then press that down. And then I will flip up the bottom edge, add a little bit more. Um, if you add too much powder, it's not that big of a deal. It's not gonna harm your quilt. You'll just have to buy more sooner. You'll run out. So be as conservative as you wish. It, a little goes a long way. All right, so you can see that it is attached. I can carry this over to my sewing machine and put my quilting in it. Um, the other thing that's so great about it is there's no fumes, there's no overspray, you're not gonna have sticky spots on your floors. Uh, it's super lightweight and you don't have to mess with pins, no more sticking your fingers. It's just an all around great product. You can hold down your binding edge if you wanted to do just a little line along that edge, that would be great. It's good for applique, needle turn, or um, raw edge. You could put your Dresden plates on your quilts. Anything, anything that you need to stick down before you stitch it, this would be ideal for that. So I hope you enjoy. Um, Quilter Select Free Fuse, I love it. So uh, any strong opinions about the fusible powder or the spray? There's some questions about it, um, oh. wondering how much you use and does it clump? I've seen it used one time in the shops, one of the, the associates in the shop was using it, and she just, she just sprinkled a little bit, and, and I didn't notice any clumping then, but she, they, they really liked it in the main shop, how it worked. Yeah, I haven't used it, so I can't really speak to that one. Yeah. I do like my spray, though. And, and it was part of Jenny's box, too, mm -hmm. and so a lot of people have had an opportunity to play with it, and oh, some nice. are responding right, that yeah. they like it. So oh, that's good, good news. Yep. Good, good. Like that. And then there was a question about machine quilting? Yes, they're wanting to know if they can just bring a quilt to us, to the shops, or maybe even send it in and use binding services only, and that answer is yes. Yes, yes, that's correct. Um, we're happy to just bind it for you. Um, okay, so it is National Quilting Month, and y'all may have noticed our quilting is campaign that has been going out in boxes you've ordered, we've sent out cards, we've mailed cards to your house to get your feedback on this, and we've asked you to um, print things out and write what quilting is to you and share it on social media using the hashtag quilting is. And uh, Cheryl in our shop, um, she, we've just gotten bags of these, just bags and bags. If you come into Hamilton, um, we have them posted everywhere. We have a wall of them in pennies. And then just walking around, we just we ran out of real estate, to be honest. And, uh, and they're just up everywhere, all over the walls. And Cheryl's been um, sending me some of the ones as she's posting and reading them all that she finds particularly poignant. So I wanted to read one to you. And then um, we also have a little video for you of some of our uh, friends from outside Missouri Star that we've worked with in the past and what quilting is to them. But first, let me just read. It means making a connection with my grandmother who died when I was four. I found a bag with quilt blocks that she started and was able to make two quilts when I was 19. I haven't stopped since. They were tucked away in the attic for years and I'm sure she's happy to have them finished. And as we talk about quilting as history this week, I just thought that was a really lovely tie to our own personal histories as well as histories of our cultures and, um, and the way we just use sewing and fabric to express ourselves and tell our stories. So big thanks to Cheryl. She's gonna keep sending me those and I'm gonna keep sharing them with you. Um, so here is that video. 
um, quilting is uh, from some of our other designer friends as we celebrate National Quilting Month. Quilting is inspirational. Quilting is a story. Quilting is therapy. Quilting is empowering. Quilting is creativity. Quilting means something different to everybody, but from where I'm standing, I see it that it's, it is community, and it's a connection, and it's friendship. Quilting is memories. Quilting is an adventure. Quilting is art. Quilting is empowering. Quilting is everything I love wrapped into one. Quilting is making quilts for everyone in my family. Quilting to me is all about friendship. Quilting is community. Quilting is family. Quilting is, for me, peace. For me, quilting is life. And we are back with Amy Barrickman, who is the author of this lovely Vintage Notions book and pattern that we are giving away. So make sure you hit that link that Dalton and Hannah are dropping in the comments. Hi, welcome. Hi, Kate. It's, it's nice great to, to be here. It's nice to see you. You have so many things going on. I do. I have so much to share. And we could start with the Vintage Notions book. If Let's you want do it, to. since this is what we're giving away. And um, Amy is a wealth of information on the history of quilt blocks and different patterns and things like that. So fire away your questions and uh, she's happy to get those answered for you. So tell us about this lovely book we're giving away. Well, this book is a treasury. I call it like a domestic devotional. It has not only uh, wonderful fabrics on the pages, but it has stories and lessons. And they come from a women's institute that was back in the 1920s. And I discovered this school, and it was a correspondence school, not unlike learning online is today. And um, I started collecting the art, the magazines, and the newsletters from the school. And then it, the content was Beautiful. so, well, thank you. It was so timeless, and I felt like it was so relevant for today that I decided to put it all together in my Vintage Notions book. How um, did you come across all of these? Where, do you, where does one find these goodies? Well, Not to give away all your secrets. No, that's okay. Um, there's plenty to go around because the school actually educated 400,000 people on, you know, sewing, cooking, and millinery. Um, so I found them, like, eBay. Um, once in a while, I'll go to an estate sale and discover one of their little course books. It was the Women's Institute, and it was located in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Ah, uh, yes. Granton. Yes, yes. I'm I'm anxious to go there. The building is actually still standing where the school um, employed 500 people at one time teaching oh, wow. and doing this. So this I wanted to share is one of my favorite spreads, and it is the um, the patchwork and applique story and article. Mm -hmm. And I actually brought the original. Yeah, let's see it. Um, so this actually came. I don't know where it's good for me to show this. This was what this is one of the um, pieces in my collection. Women's World Magazine published this book of patchwork every year, and this was the actual article that then was scanned and is on the oh, page yeah, of the is. book. So it's just really interesting reading the you know the history. And when I heard the quilting is, you know, that you just read the connection that this book um, has to our you know, generations of sewing sisters from the past. Yeah. Um, so the book has not only articles about um, oh, cross stitch recipes, embroidery. I see. And this is the march. You can mm -hmm. see the the fun textile. So oh, wow, what's this? This is actually um, this was a hanky, mm -hmm. and it was scanned. And then this is actually a pocket. So for each season, uh. the book has a pocket, so you can put you can store you know fabric swatches, recipes, um, articles. So it was truly a, a labor of love it to put this looks together. Like it. I and mean, just the detail you have on these pages. Well, that's where my fabric collection came into play. So you can see there's a hanky. Um, and we're going to talk more about hankies here pretty there's soon. There's a lot with, to be done yeah. with those. Yes. So whether it be, um, and then I wanted to tell you too, there are actually patterns, oh, sewing so patterns. Beautiful. There's another one of the pockets. And there are testimonials. So you'll actually learn from the women who were part of this course um, or this 
school and hear their stories of how sewing or quilting like lifted them up, whether it be economically or just personally for, you know, happiness. Just like so what kind, like, Today. what's an example? What's a story that you particularly loved that um, you came across? Well, there's one story of a woman whose husband was um, killed in an ac a farm accident, and she was left with her children to support, and she took the Women's Institute course and was able to go into business for herself as an entrepreneur, you know, sewing and doing alterations. And so those types of stories um, are really fun. Oh, gosh, Beautiful. Isn't that fun? Mm -hmm. well, and it's the sunflower, which I'm thinking of right now. So, um, and then this is a feed sack fabric, I think, that it was um, embroidered on. So, and there are patterns in each chapter, That's too. right. You've got quite a few things to yeah. do in here, I believe. Like, this is a flower, that mm -hmm. you, a fabric flower that is one of the projects. I brought a little pouch. This is one, and of course, this one has my favorite vintage notion uh -huh. on it. I see it. I you see know it. what it is? It's that mother of pearl button right there, right, isn't it? Right. Yep. She's yes. had to toe in them most yes. of the time. Yes. In fact, I think I have a ring on yeah. there and a bracelet with I pearl think, buttons. I, and your earrings, Oh, my too. earrings, too. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen Amy without some sort of mother of pearl accessory mm -hmm. on. Yes, yes. Yeah. We can talk more about that. And this is actually probably the all-time favorite project from the Vintage Notions sure. book. And it's a man's dress shirt made into an apron. I think my um, um, I think my meme had an apron very similar to that when I was growing up, that same style. Yeah, the cross back mm -hmm. is so comfortable. Mm -hmm. So, yes, the Vintage Notions book is, is definitely Well, it just seems like such a sweet a fun... gift to somebody maybe who's just getting into sewing and doesn't... Necess isn't necessarily aware of just the rich history or mm -hmm. just a vintage lover, um, right. which you and I both are. Yes, yes, yeah. we do share that. Oh, we've got some questions. Amy's Great. got fans out there. Well, uh, Mary <laughs> says that she met Amy at Trends in Portland. Oh, okay. And she says that you are a wealth of knowledge. Oh. And Kathy says it's nice to see Amy uh, being interviewed. They love your work over the years. And then, well, thank you, everyone. Yeah. Don says, hi, Amy. I'm so happy to see you and miss you. And they want to know what your plans are for the future, what you're doing. And well, we're going to get into that. Yeah. We're going to talk about <laughs> okay. that. Okay. It's coming. We're in a holding pattern. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, uh -huh. Thanks, and then, Lisa. Yes. How do you define vintage, they would like to know? That's a very good question. Well, there is an actual definition well, it's sure. um, a certain number of years, and of course, when I'm put on the spot, I cannot. That's but so I think it's it actually is not that. I mean, it's like maybe 30 years. I yeah. forgot the exact because when when I calculated mm -hmm. it, I was thinking like the toys that I played with when I was right. a child are now. I mean, 30 years ago when I was. However old. <laughs> <laughs> the idea that that is now considered vintage. I mean, yeah. it's all back in style again, well, and it's alarming, to be honest. But it's fine. It's fine. It, well, and I think the beauty of vintage is we're able to work with, like, fabric that we already have yeah. or fabric that you maybe can find at the thrift shop mm -hmm. um, and upcycle. So, and, uh, and also, too, I think that vintage just has such a cachet to it now like it it's sort of um it has inherent value because it is vintage it's not mm -hmm. something that's just old right like right. it's it's got extra worth because of that and i think that there's a lot to be said for that more quality and mm -hmm. and that leads to value so mm -hmm. You want to talk about some? Yeah. Well, first of okay. all, let's tell them about this log okay. cabin behind us because this thing is beautiful. I don't know if we can get a nice um, close-up shot. If you need me to get my head out of the way, or maybe try that. Yeah. How's that? Um, so, so you can see this tiny. So this tiny is a log cabin quilt that's in my collection, and. I believe, and I've had confirmed that it's late 1800s or early 1900s, but what you see here is tiny pieces of fabric. So the log cabin... I mean, it almost looks like crumb piecing. Like, yeah, they are tiny. Tiny. Yeah. Um, and so the beauty, the log cabin was one of the very earliest blocks. Um, so it's really known as one of the pioneer blocks mm -hmm. because the, you could use such small scraps of fabric to make this... And, and just what a testament to a lack of wastefulness, right. you know what I mean? And just using every, every single scrap. thing. Yeah. yeah. So this one is, is deteriorating a little because it does have um, 
silk and mm -hmm. that didn't last long but I have some projects made with log cabin blocks mm -hmm. I could show you yeah let's see you want me I to think everyone wants to see those grab those seems okay. important yeah. okay well I'll start out with let me reach over here um since we have the pattern as part of the giveaway for the little folio yeah. and let me just sit, point that out one more time uh Dalton and Hannah hi Dalton and Hannah are uh, dropping the link to win this lovely book and um, the pattern for these folios here. Uh, just make sure that you click the link, put in your name and email address. We, can't, we don't just draw from the comments, so if you just go in and say, ooh, pick me, I would love to, but that is unfortunately not how we can do it. So you have to go in and click the link and sign up, and then we will draw the winner here shortly. That's exciting. Isn't it? Yes. So you can see with the log cabin, um, these were, this was actually the block that we stitched into the fold and go mm -hmm. folio. And we Where also- Where did you find these? I found a stack of these blocks. I think I have a hundred of them that I oh, bought. Wow. Um, the hand like stitching. Yes, yes. So they're wonderful. They're the perfect size for the, the small size of the folio, which I'll mm -hmm. open here and show you um, just for storing. Well, there you thread. go. Um, your thread, uh, your pins. I think I have a thimble inside the little um, bag here. Travel and with your handwork and yes, your paper piecing. Paper piecing mm -hmm. people really for oh, the I larger bet. size. Um, yeah. So the, and then here's another log cabin that was made into a little um, just zipper pouch. So so many ways that you can you know upcycle your your blocks. I was telling Amy I was at a. Um, uh, antique mall over the weekend and I just found stacks of old Dresden plates that somebody had someone had uh, for sale there and they were there were a lot of them I, I'm still thinking about them like maybe I, I, need to go I might have to, we might have to I know. fight each other for them. that's fine I'll um, wrestle you well and just to show you something else from my collection the where I really started to have a lot of interest in the quilt block history mm -hmm. was when I found this magazine. And you've shown this to me before. Yeah. It's amazing. It's this, so cool. It really is. Nice. This is a catalog from the 1928. It's dated. Um, but inside that Again. catalog are hundreds so of blocks. And this is the first publication you that actually gave kind of names. So to blocks and allowed you to then order those blocks uh, as patterns. So when I found that, I really started to dig into the research on the quilt block history. I'm trying to remember the one and, I took a picture of that I was like, ooh, I need to make this one. Um, I can't remember I what it was now. There and are so my many that are really inspiring yeah. in that publication. And that's one thing I do on my website is a lot of times I'll find vintage publications that then I can republish yep. as a modern. And we did, my coloring book was based off some of the blocks. That's right. In, in this, so quilt therapy, the coloring book I did came, mm. was inspired by that. I feel like I that. need to be wearing like white gloves when I touch oh, these things and just well, really. I actually have three copies of this, so. <laughs> How do you? Anyway, it's amazing. Oh, I'm sorry, I love out. to collect. Mm -hmm, yeah, it's true. Amy, they've raised the question. They would like to know how you store the quilt behind you. Well, there is a archival tissue that you can buy to wrap it in, and so I use that. Um, I did have it hanging at one point in my home over our fireplace, and oh, beautiful. Yeah, and that was. Um, but now it's in storage. It. It was, I don't know if I told you this, it was featured in American Patchwork and Quilting magazine oh, cool. about 10 years ago um, as they had a little historical feature in the magazine, so. So question, after you had it hung above your fireplace, I mean, just with dust and things, like how did you, were you able to clean it? Do you just do a, yeah. I'm afraid to touch it. Yeah, so. I um, have not cleaned it with anything specific mm -hmm. other than just like brushing it off at oh, this okay. point. So, um, and it didn't keep it hanging for very long mm -hmm. um, just because of its age. I, yeah. I try to, you know, rotate things and switch them out sometimes. That makes sense. Yeah. So. Any other questions? Ooh, we've got another one. Yeah. They would like to know your favorite quilting project. <sighs> oh my goodness. Good luck to you. <laughs> well, I'm, gosh. <laughs> The favorite quilting project. I actually explode. am really, well, I'll, I have it here. I can show it. Yeah, well, do it. it's kind of, it's not necessarily. I think you should totally show it off if you're going to. Quilting gonna. project. It's my, 
it is a quilting project. I, let me start over. This is it. <laughs> this is <laughs> it. It's my chance to uh -huh. talk about my all your favorite stuff. My um, pearl buttons. Yeah. And also this. Um, That's well, beautiful. Pearl gut button patchwork pouch, which is part of. A unit, my Your little program I have for vintage modern makers. Mm -hmm. um, so this pouch is great for, you know, small instant gratification um, projects. I'm a big fan of that. And we just even have, you know, upcycled this. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Isn't that fun? So did um, you add the orange? Did you start no, with just this, a star or was the whole thing? This was a vintage quilt block. So I'm really about using either found fabric in in blocks mm -hmm. more than doing a lot of quilting myself. I let, do a lot more sewing, but sure. I love incorporating piecing in those projects. So that's what we have done with this. Um, so this is a, a project that's in an online course that I have online, mm -hmm. and that's at vintagemodernmakers.com. And I've done Pearl Button. Um, I have one on hankies. Uh, tomato pincushion. Uh, I have two coming up on the quilt history of quilt blocks. So that's so cool. Yeah, it's and so you have a newsletter so that people right. can sign up for, and then you have these lovely little right. Yes, so gift things. So speaking how do of pearl sign up buttons, for your, um... well, on my newsletter, you when you register for the newsletter, you not only get these some fun little tags mm -hmm. that are actually art from my vintage notions book. Um, but you'll also get uh, a pattern that's a magic pattern, which is means it's made from dimensions. And so, um, like the magic patterns that were in this book. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, and then you're signed up to get, you know, so weekly, so monthly uh, inspiration from me that's kind of vintage made modern style is the way I like to think of it. That's so fun. Um, okay, so let's talk about this folio okay. because we are giving away this pattern. Make sure that you uh, hit that link and sign up to win uh, this book and this lovely pattern. Jenny will be doing a live tutorial on this uh, tomorrow at 11 a.m. You can watch it on Facebook and YouTube or come into the main shop where she'll be doing it live right there and you can hang out with her and ask questions. But what is this lovely thing? Okay, well, this lovely project is perfect for storing, I like to say, Tools, jewels, or tech items. So when it comes to... Um, cute, real cute. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can, and you can see here, this is the sewing version that was actually art inspired from my book on a fabric line I did a few years ago. So in the sewing version, you have a place for your, you know, your seam, seam ripper. ripper, your scissors, your two little drawstring pouches that are perfect for, you know, wonder clips. This size would be perfect for your... English paper piecing, mm -hmm. um, and then you have your, of course, your needle protector, and I think those um, hearts are Missouri Star pins. They are. Um, I recognize them. So there's the large version in the and sewing. And I just love how organized that is, right? When you open it, it's not, everything's not spilling out everywhere. It's all, it's, because I tend place. to just, like, shove things in and go, and that would keep things much better. Everything has its place. And then here's the small size. Mm -hmm. And again, it's perfect for, you know, organizing all your different types of pins and needles that you use. And I wanted to share um, the jewelry version too. And um, let's see if I have the jewelry version. I have it right here. So this is um, the jewelry. Oh, I like that. And I like that fabric. Isn't that bit. great? It's yeah. Bonnie Christine's fabric. And oh, there you can you see how jewelry gorgeous. to your jewelry holder? I did. I did. <laughs> spirit There's animal. my total spirit animal. <laughs> and the snaps. Look, I, I even like have, yeah, have the gold beautiful. snaps. So you can, you know, put your earrings here, bracelets, rings, you know. And a little strap for well, your necklace. I just like necklace. that if you are like, if I'm going on a large trip, I have like an official heavy duty jewelry thing. But for something like that, just for a weekend away, where your necklaces aren't going to get all tangled right. and it just slips, fits in really easy. Well, and when I talk about um, ju tools or tech, this is actually made. This one we just made. And thanks to my mom and Mary who make our samples. Well, let's see if they can guess what it's made out of based on the fabric. Who can guess? Yeah, can you guys guess what what kind of fabric she upcycled for this one? It's uh, got a little bit of a sheen to it. If that's helpful. I feel like if we show them the inside, it'll be too obvious. I think you might be right. Yeah. So we'll wait a sec. 
Let's see if they have any guesses Kayla about what knows. Kayla knows. Kayla knows over yeah, there. Yeah, Kayla's like, <laughs> ooh, pick me, pick me. Any guesses, Teresa? I, I don't know. I don't Might know from too. the audience. Are they uh, weighing in? Uh, with no, any, no one has mentioned anything. Right. But while you're kind of waiting on that, all right. Ooh, we have some questions. Yeah, they're they're asking. Uh, someone has a beautiful wedding ring quilt that their grandmother made, and it's gotten some nicotine stains on it over the years. Oh, what's what's the best way to remove those stains, Amy? Well, I know there is. I've heard over and over recommended uh, the. It's I think called Retro Clean. Mm -hmm. There are a couple cleaning solutions that are specifically for your vintage um, textiles, and they're going to be very delicate. You know, take delicate formulas of washing. So I definitely would um, choose one of those that is specifically for. Um, vintage textiles. And we do carry that here at Missouri State. Okay. So. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Well, and speaking of that, this this was my grandmother's guest towel oh, in her beautiful. bathroom, and it does have a tiny did little stain. Did she do the embroidery? Stain. She did. Oh, wow. And it did have a tiny little stain. You can still see a little bit of it, but, you know, anything that you have. I wouldn't have noticed if you had pointed at it. Yeah. Any, you, many times you can work around those stains. Mm -hmm with a project like this that's, and oh, here, I have to show this embroidered version too. Isn't this fun? This is a um, dresser scarf. That's beautiful. So, and I, I shared on uh, Instagram and Facebook the hanky uh -huh. um, yesterday. And so this we made in the last 24 hours to share with you, Kate. Aww. And you can see, isn't that a fun rose? I really like the way you fussy cut that and the way that whole thing stands out. Well, and that's what is so great about Jenny's templates that work mm -hmm. with this pattern. The templates are a great way to be able to feature, fussy cut. Yeah, and, feature your Or fabric. you can use the pattern and cut a plastic template. I definitely think that's a great. And in this case, we actually put um, I put it, oh, I decided it would be jewelry, a small <laughs> jewelry version, or pins. Oh, look, you found Mother of Pearl buttons in there. <laughs> I did. There's there's another <laughs> pair of Pearl, Mother of Pearl yeah, button earrings. So, they're so cute. And uh, I think I have collapsible scissors in here, maybe. Nice. Um, yeah, collapsible scissors. Oh, no, it's a jump it's drive. It's a jump drive. <laughs> <laughs> so there's the tech. That, if I were to guess what you were going to pull out, that wasn't going to be Wait, okay. at any oh, point. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Hold on, hold on. Then we have I to told them you I had them. I had the collapsible you scissors. You do, <laughs> of course. Ready for anything. Ready. Yeah. Ready Cut or store. Go. You've got yep. it. And um, yeah, so so this they're, one. They're, they're guessing um, hanky uh -huh. or a, um, what do they call it, a pocket square? Or pocket square is oh, pretty close, yeah. A, that would be more like a bandana. Yeah. yeah. But man, here, now you'll we'll know what it is. A it was a tie. tie. Very good. There you go. And you know the beauty of ties. And then there's the reverse fabric. Right. The exterior. Right. Mm -hmm. The beauty of really beautifully woven ties is that's, the... The fabrics are gorgeous. They're gorgeous silks, and the mm -hmm. front and the back side are, coordinate each other. And, and they're so sturdy, too. Like, it's just... That, yes. Yeah. It feels um, really solid. And... I love, we did a lot of ties over the years. Patterns for upcycling has been a huge part of what I did when, you know, with Indigo Junction. So it's fun to get back into to patterns again. I believe it. So yeah. we're going to give y'all just a couple more minutes to get your name in to win um, Amy Barrickman's Vintage Notions book and the Fold and Go Folio. Um, the link is being dropped by Hannah and Dalton yep. in the comments, so make sure you click there to sign up, and then Amy will announce the winner in just a few yeah. minutes. We're going to close it. You have a stack of goodies over there, oh, too. Yes. I think they really want to see all of this. All the treasure. Yeah. Okay. We don't have a ton of time left, okay. but we have time for that. Okay. This It's old fabric. We all want to yes. see it. Yes. Yes. Okay. What can I hold? Okay. You can hold it. You want to hold it up, and I'll talk sure. about it? Sure. Okay, so this is a vintage oh feed sack piece, and we actually made one of the fold and go folios out of the feed sack. And this is another feed sack version. So again, if you have small it's little vintage dress forms, yeah, it's isn't so it cute, cute dressmaking? I know. I have. I love that print. Yeah. Uh, and that's one thing too. I'll mention with the pattern, there is a QR code that's included in the pattern that takes you to a lookbook where I actually show these samples made up. Cool. And, in the, and you also get a few Gosh. videos with the pattern. So the pattern's more than just a printed pattern. It's kind of a pattern experience, I like to say. Look at these teeny and tiny isn't squares. Isn't that wonderful? So wow. 
I think and this is all hand work, isn't it? Yes, I, it, it's an amazing oh. piece. Uh, in fact, we have the little, I made a little folio out of that. And I think Jenny may be sharing that one tomorrow. I'm not completely sure. Just but the, I think the tiny patience one. patience that it takes to do things like this blows my mind. Well, and each little and the polka colors, dot. Um, yeah. There's just so many charming little prints in this. Yes, I really like this one right here. Isn't that fun? Yeah, that guy. I know. So... Yes, fun? that's part of what I love sharing, like in my newsletter. Mm -hmm. um, and then I do do a series called Vintage, Mod um, Vintage Made Modern on uh, YouTube, too, where I share more of my collection. And um, then this is a bigger this piece. This one's a little, yeah. Yeah, that one might be harder to show. It was a flying geese um, See if I can. top that had there some damage go. on it, but... Eventually, out, we made, we also made uh, a couple fold and go folios out of it. Hmm. And when I was a kid, this actually was stretched and hung in our uh, living room oh my or gosh. in our family room. So this was the, this is a piece that my mom had left over from that. Uh, and I found a picture of and me like when I was, I don't know. Found a way to carry it around in your everyday life well, and you, to keep right. it with you. That's beautiful. Well, that's what I love about the fold and go folio because you can use it for so many different, you know, purposes. Mm -hmm. And then it's great for, you know, if you have friends or family to customize a gift that, you know, yeah, whether it be in fabric or, and oh, and the other thing I wanted to say is I love picking fun buttons <laughs> yes, to go too. on the folio. <laughs> we went antiquing together once and uh, she's like a button magpie. She's <laughs> Find them. I do. They they find me. So I did a terrible job folding. Oh, them. that's Sorry. okay. That's okay. Um, this is French general fabric, I believe, uh -huh. which I know you guys carry. And then this isn't that a beautiful it's mother of gorgeous. pearl button? It really um, is. So yeah, this one. One more little example of all the fun you can have. All right, Dalton, go ahead and draw our winner while we take any last questions here for Amy. He's going to hold up a sign, I think, and tell us who won. Any more questions, comments to share? Not at the moment, but I can say if, if you don't, aren't fortunate enough to win that vintage book, we do carry it in the Mercantile We do store. carry <laughs> it, it's a, and it's available online well, as well. And the pattern. And so, the pa as is the pattern. Okay. <laughs> Sharon? Everyone's like, Dalton, we can't read your handwriting. Yeah, come closer. <laughs> Sharon Avent, you are the winner. Congratulations, Sharon. Sharon Avent. Someone from my team will um, shoot you an email asking for your info, and we will get this um, sent out for you. And if you would like uh, Amy to autograph it, just drop a drop something in the comments. We'll make sure she does it before she goes. Sure. So, um, yes. Yeah, so, Vintage Modern Makers, the do-it-yourself courses. If you want to learn all things vintage um, about how to upcycle these old things, keep them useful and with, while also preserving them. Amy, as you know, is a wealth of information and they can find that at? VintageModernMakers.com. There you and go. And AmyBerrickman.com also, you can link over from there. And she is in all places, social media as well, so you can follow her. And I have no doubt we'll be seeing her again on the show. Um, you're just such a wealth of information. Oh. It'd be silly not to use you as a resource. Well, I love that you're just up the road, Kate. So I'm happy it's to visit fun. any time. It's fun. So um, after this, um, we are going to uh, do our own vintage Jenny, um, not because Jenny's old, but because um, she's just gotten so in shape. We had to explain because we had people who were like, hey, that like people were emailing her oh. and they're like, hey, someone's impersonating you. No, no, no she does. That's, that's Looks just super her. great. That's so I know healthy. she's amazing. So um, we are going to do the bear paw vintage Jenny in just a minute. Uh, and then I sewed it up in some different colorways and also learned a ton doing it because I kept messing up my corners. So I will show you what I learned about that right after this. You got it, Randy? Hi, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. I love the bear paw. It's one of those patterns that um, that is traditional and awesome, and I love it, but it's a lot of work, and I have totally simplified it. And so one of the things I wanna show you today is how to cut a lot of squares without it taking too much time. And here's how I do that. I take my strips, and I'm gonna unwrap them uh, just in half, you know, so they're still folded at the fold, and I'm gonna stack them uh, two, two strips on each stack. 
and I'm going to do I'm going to do about maybe four of them. So you keep them lined up together, and I actually keep them lined up on the lines of the mat. I make sure they stay on the lines of the mat. So let's go ahead and lay these out here. Okay, so once you get a few of these lined up like this, what we're going to do is we're going to take our ruler and we're going to come over here and we're going to cut off all the selvage edges first. You just want to make sure that these right here stay lined up on your lines. Then we're going to come two and a half. And for those of you, I'm left-handed, so I'm going to come this direction. You right-handed people will come the other direction. And we're just going to do this and we're going to cut all of our blocks into two and a half inch squares. Here's the fun. And you have a bear paw. You have a bear paw. You take four of these and you're going to put these together like this to form a paw. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial on the super easy strip bear paw from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. Okay, so that was the bear paw. And um, I stitched it up in a few different colors for y'all to see. This is um, Blue Breeze 40 Karat Crystals. And on this one, I finally got the corners figured out. And it was, it was breaking me for a while there. Because if you look at, well, this one, they're right up on the line. But it was just, it was really hard for me to figure out what I needed to do here when I was snowballing these corners. And it's all a matter of where you line this square up. So if I can show you, I didn't finish this one on purpose for this moment. No, that's not true. I just was really tired and forgot to do this one. So when you line it up, you want to make sure that this corner and this cor this line and this line are at the edge, outer edges of the square. And what I was doing wrong on particularly this ghastly looking thing is I had it over here like this. And so then that cuts off too much of your fabric to get room for your quarter inch seam when you put the whole thing together. So if you make sure that you line up your two and a half inch squares on the outside of the block, and I'm sure Jenny explains all of this in the tutorial, um, I honestly skipped around it because I was like, yeah, I figured it out. I'm terrible at directions. Um, that is the thing I learned. You have to keep it on the outer edges when you sew it across so that then you naturally build in that extra quarter inch that you need for that seam for when you put the whole thing together. So that said, that was my learning curve here, but here it is in some pretty new fabrics that we have. This is Blue Breeze 40 Karat Crystals with lovely, um, I really liked this. It's kind of got a watercolor vibe to it. It's very, very beautiful. Um, Teresa, do you remember who this one's by? Oh, no, I don't, but it's beautiful. I think it's, I'm, I'm sitting it's, over here going, I want a piece. I feel like it's <laughs> Wilmington. That sounds right in my head. 40 karat crystals would be Wilmington, right? I'll say that's right. And then we've got these batiks, did these batiks with it. And so on this one, I put in the sashing in the middle. This is a wider sashing. And please, it's, it's so not. It's, I really struggled with these until I figured that corner situation out. But these are the honey blue batik strips, which are blues and yellows. And again, with batiks, both sides are the same because of the dyeing process, which also makes them ideal for English paper piecing or just any um, paper piecing that involves a reverse because you don't have to keep it in your brain which side is right side. So I really just like to use solids and batiks for that because then I don't have to think about it. This one is awful. <laughs> the fabric is beautiful. It's a gingham foundry. And um, these light blues and mustard yellows, and it's got kind of this older vibe to it. So I flipped the bear paws around because I just wanted to see what it would look like when you made me did a solid block on these and put them together the other way. And I think it'd look really nice if you have your corners correct, which I still did not at this point. But the colors are beautiful, and I um, played with some solids around it, and I think it can be really lovely. But this one might be my very favorite, partially because I got the corners figured out. And so they actually look like paws that are sharp. Um, and this is speckled metallics. And these are all done in just in jelly rolls. So it's a very easy project. Uh, just make sure that you're lining up your snowball to the outer edges. And then you'll be able to get these nice sharp points here. Um, 
and my daughter picked the colors on this one. I was gonna make them all orange and she insisted that I use a contrasting color. So that is uh, the bear paw in newer fabrics so that you can see what that looks like and then go check out that tutorial. It is available on YouTube. Do we have any more questions before we sign off, Teresa? No, we sure don't. Okay, fantastic. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Next week, we'll be back with Jenny hosting as we go and take a tour of the Hamilton Quilt Museum, which will be so much fun. We'll have another live giveaway. And make sure you tune in tomorrow, Wednesday at 11 a.m. on YouTube and Facebook when Jenny will be doing a live tutorial of Amy Barrickman's Fold and Go Folio. And you'll be able to ask questions about all of that then as well. So signing off from snowy, snowy Hamilton, I'm Kate. Thanks so much for tuning in and have a fantastic Tuesday.